welcome to the channel, everyone, or welcome back to the channel, everyone. If you're new here, an extra welcome to you. And just for your information, if you don't know why you're here or who you're watching, I'm a commercial photographer who started making these videos to try and share what I've learned over about the last 20 years or so of living and working in this business. I've uh, kind of hit a pace of dropping about one or even two of these videos a week. So subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and make sure you hit that little bell down there as well so YouTube will actually let you know when I'm here. Okay, so recently I've had some behind the scenes videos showing what it takes to capture these types of images, but it doesn't stop there. As you've seen, there's a lot of work that goes into capturing these images, so we don't wanna drop the ball now. Not to capitalize on images with such strong foundations would be a missed opportunity to say the least. Now, how do I take my images from say this to this? Well, it's usually a combination of color, contrast, and selective sharpening. Let's get into it after we roll that intro. Okay, today I thought I would take the last three cover images from my Instagram, I think it'd be right over here, and pull the curtain back so we can look at where the images were right after being captured in camera, and then where I took them in post, and why. Although they are all from the same shoot, each one of these is fairly different, so I thought it would be a fun exercise to run through these three. So, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first image we're gonna open is the one with the custom backdrop. Uh, so you can see, you might hear a little jingling in the background, that's my, my dogs here with me today. Uh, but anyway, um, so we open up here, you can see where we're starting with this image. And it's, uh, man, it looks pretty good, right? Right out of the camera. But we can take it a little bit further, so Let's uh, just go down these sliders. We're in the basic tab here. This is the new uh, camera raw window. Takes a little getting used to. I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a touch. Uh, I like to go down to these before I mess with the contrast. Uh, so we're gonna hit the highlights just a little bit. We've got um, some peaking kind of right over in this area. So we've gotta be mindful of that. Uh, shadows, we'll bring those down a little bit. On the shadow section, I'm watching this side of his jersey because I want to keep uh, some detail in those uh, in that darker those shadow areas. Um, the white, bring that up just a touch um, there and again. Kind of have to watch these lines and the sides of his uh, pants there. Um, we'll bring the blacks down a little bit. Uh, okay, so then we get to the texture and clarity. Uh, sliders and this is where you kind of have to watch yourself. Uh, clarity is great for uniform so we can take this up here and you see you get a lot of nice detail in this uniform and you can take it as far as you want. Uh, a lot of people seem to take it a little too far in my opinion. I'm gonna bring it back to around uh, let's say around like 25 for here. The main thing with clarity and texture you have to watch the uh, skin you can uh, add just a lot of uh, stuff that you would not want on someone's skin by cranking these these up. Some are worse than others based on you know kind of their skin profiles, but I like to keep it uh, at a minimum at least in the first pass through uh, camera raw. So camera raw, what we can, can what you could conceivably do. I didn't do it on these this file itself, but what you could do is. Um, Set everything up here, open it in Photoshop, duplicate that layer, and then reopen it in Camera Raw. And then you can uh, work with masking and just keep the areas uh, that you want to kind of tinker with in future layers. And then mask out, say, like if you want to bring it in here and, and crank the clarity, you could do that. And then you could mask his skin out. But this first run through is a universal kind of run through. 
And so uh, I'd like to be um, really careful. We will work the contrast a little bit here so you can kind of see. Uh, we've got these light and dark areas that are right next to each other and I want to accentuate that. And we will, you'll see we'll take um, it a little bit further once we get into um, Photoshop. Okay, so we'll get on here to the to detail and we'll bump the sharpening just a touch. Uh, and optics. Um, I like to click these, uh, the newer lenses, newer glass, you, you, and the newer cameras, camera sensors. Uh, you really don't have much of an issue with this, but I go ahead and click it anyway. And then profile corrections um, will adjust based off of uh, what millimeter you were um, shooting at the time, and it'll also um, remove any kind of uh, harsh vignetting that you might have around the ed edges. So sometimes it looks uh, good as is, and but most of the time I usually um, go with the, uh, the profile correction. All right, so we're gonna open this up. All right, so now I'm gonna jump over to the actual file that I pulled into Photoshop. So we'll go to the uh, base layer here. Let's see, down here. All right, and you can see this is right out of Camera Raw. Uh, and what I wanted to do right off the bat was to extend these uh, lights on this side of the canvas. So uh, used just some clone stamping and extended these out. And, and then used another layer to get this one here, which was um, a little uh, harder to do because I had to maneuver around his hand and the actual football. So then what I did was uh, combined all the layers and straightened out uh, the file. I was a little crooked in camera, and so I just corrected that there. And then this next layer is where I kind of, or where I do start the color grading process. So on this file, I used a color balance layer. And you can see here in the shadows, I added some cyan. Uh, in the darker areas, along with some blue, which kind of gives it more of a cinematic type feel, at least for me, and kind of crisp, gives the image a little crispness. Uh, and the highlights I added, I took some blue out of the highlights, which adds yellow, um, which kind of helps with the skin tone, warms it up just a touch in the highlights, to counterbalance the, uh, the coolness that we're putting in the uh, shadows. So let me click that on and off. You can kind of see, and what it does too is it gets rid of that magenta cast that we had um, before. And then our next uh, layer is just a curves layer where I just bumped the overall uh, exposure, kind of bring it up. And then these next two uh, layers are curves adjustments where I am going after the the difference here, these areas here between the uh, white bars there and the dark um, areas in between. So these are the two curve layers where I'm adjusting those areas. And what I've done is create a curve. So here I'm pulling down the, the mid adjustment here. And then I'll uh, fill, the, fill the curves layer with black and then paint in the areas. So uh, as you can see here, I'll use a white brush. So this is as harsh if I went 100%, that's where it would be. Uh, so obviously I didn't do that. Here's what my mask looks like. It's very slight, but it does, as you can see, it does give it that little bump in contrast. And then this layer is the exact opposite. So I, I hit that mid range, pulled up the exposure, uh, fill with black and then painted in on these, um, these kind of light areas. And so you can see if I went hundred percent here, it kind of gets a little, little crazy. So I didn't um, go that far. And then let's see here. Then we went uh, combined everything here, and this is a um, high pass. And so what this is doing is giving our, us our sharpness. So it's very, very slight. I like to do my main sharpening uh, once I know that's at 200%. When I, I normally don't sharpen until I get my file to the actual size that I'm going to use it, and then I'll uh, sharpen. But for, for this, I wanted to just show I used a, a high pass layer. Then I used one more high pass layer here. And this was just kind of a, um, I think the high pass is probably around 59. And so this gave just that extra little 
crunch to the image. So you can see this kind of does what similar, it's a similar effect as clarity. So we're getting that extra detail brought out in the jersey and the shadow areas. Uh, you know, we've got his muscles here. Uh, and it's usually not too harsh on the skin. If you go crazy with it, you see I've adjusted the opacity down to 50%. If you keep it at 100, you'll start getting some halo uh, areas. And so always bring that down. Rarely do I run that at 100%. So that was at 50% on, on this one here. Let me get that off. So you can see here, tab, go full screen. All right, so we'll back it out. This is where we started and this is where we ended. So once again, building on a strong foundation to begin with and you know, taking it to that next level in the retouch with the retouching process. Okay, so let's go to our next image. And so this is one of the action uh, images that we pulled, pulled, that I pulled from the photo shoot. So it's running right to left and um, facing the other way so we can kind of get his number and the name off the back of his jersey. Uh, so here you can see the, you know, in camera, it, it really looks nice to uh, begin with. Um, I will adjust the clarity some, kind of in that same little area. Once again, I can always pull it back in uh, if I feel the need. Uh, exposure, just a slight bit. I think the highlights are pretty good. You don't want to lose that uh, towel. Uh, shadows. Like bring those up just a little bit because then we can adjust them again in Photoshop. So we will bring the shadows up a little bit there. The whites, once again, don't want to lose that uh, the uh, uh, detail in the towel here. And the blacks, let me bring those down just a touch. So all in all, it's pretty nice uh, in camera. Um, once again, I'm going to go down here to optics. We'll click the um, aberration removal and profile correction. So that's that uh, for this file. So you can see that's where we start right there. And once again, just one other note with uh, Camera Raw, um, I always um, open at full resolution, resolution when I'm doing this type of thing, 16 bit and 45.4 megapixels, which comes out of the uh, Nikon D850. So we'll open this file. And what I'm going to do, I'll pull it right into uh, Photoshop. I'm going to show you um, the actual file that I worked on. All right, so this is obviously going, it's headed to uh, being a composite image. Uh, so what I do is I've got a library of images that I've taken over the years at, at football games. Basically, you, you pull this in and you can move it, you can place it. Uh, however it fits you know with your your athlete let me go back here so we're going to jump up to the the mask so up here this is the mask layer and then i will open this here so you can see where the stadium fits behind him uh, this is uh, kind of the way i felt it it, it worked for me for this image uh, and in a composition sake so but you can you know you can if you want to do different things and you can obviously shrink the stadium, you can make things smaller or larger, uh, which means he would be closer to it or further away. It's just however you want to interpret what's going on. For me, I was kind of digging how the lights were uh, working across this helmet there, just his body position and everything with the stadium on this. So this kind of jobbed with me on this one. Uh, so let me get that one off. And then what I'll do, since he's moving from left to right, yeah, I use the path blur on something like this because we're going in one direction. So I've got the path blur going with the player to give that sense of motion. And then I've masked out the bottom here. See, I added a little red and then I've got a black layer which covers up the rest of my, my photo set. So you can see that takes care of that. Got a nice little, this is the advantage of photographing on turf, as you can use this element if you want to uh, in your compositing or in files. And so uh, basically this black layer hides the stuff I didn't want to uh, show up in the file. And so we'll go from there. We'll go to another curves adjustment. I start working on these lights up top. 
is just bringing the lights in just a, a touch here, just to kind of pop those lights, uh, make them a little bit um, brighter and blow them out a touch. And then this here is a pretty extreme curves adjustment. So this takes care of all the, the detail that I don't want to, to show up in that composite. So you can kind of see where this grass is hitting the uh, field, uh, which then hits the uh, bottom of the stands there. Then you might be able to see some other players and stuff like that of what was going on at the time. So then I bring this in, which kind of silhouettes our player and really isolates him to bring out what's going on with this particular image. And so uh, on this um, file as well, I've got a curves adjustment, which I have clipped uh, just to this layer here. So basically this is, I think, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm working the, the highlights. Uh, this is just a, there you go. Another super strong um, curves adjustment to accentuate these highlights. And so what I've done, you see my mask here and then I've painted in the highlights. The cool thing when you do a clip to uh, a layer that has a mask already is it relies on this mask here. So when I paint on this mask in these areas, I don't have to be as careful because this main mask down here is, is kind of overriding whatever I'm doing up top. So I can be as messy as I want here and it's not gonna go outside of this lower mask, which is kind of a benefit. Uh, so right here is when I start the uh, color grade on this image and once again uh, in these images I've kind of been uh, using color balance a little bit lately. Let's see and I'm sure I went to the shadows. Uh, really gave it a good cyan um, kick and added a little bit of blue. And then the highlights, I brought up the uh, yellows and the highlights. This was a little greenish for me, so then what I did is I brought in, I think I probably took a sample off of his helmet here and brought in kind of a garnet overlay at 30% opacity. To me, this kind of blended a little bit better uh, for this type of this image and, and what I was doing you know, with the, the team, kind of goes with their team colors, gives a little cash, uh, color cast here in the lights and to me, just kind of overall wraps it a little bit better. Once again, here's the high pass layer for some sharpening. It's probably a high pass two pixel. Uh, another high pass at a stronger uh, amount. And you can see I have masked out the uh, stands and lights, basically um, selective sharpening what I want to uh, kind of pop and come forward in this image. So I've taken out, um, you can see right there, they, they get a little too, um, too tight for me there. So mask those out. And then one more curves adjustment here to kind of give the overall exposure um, a little bit of a um, pop there. So, so that's where we started and that's where we ended right there. So that is image number two. Now let's jump back to bridge and let's open up our Final image, which is a portrait style image here. Uh, and we've already got pretty good lighting on our player. I come in at 100% just because his face is gonna make up a big part of this image and I wanna make sure that we protect uh, the skin texture. So I'm gonna give him just a little bit of exposure. And we bring those shadows down, highlights. We can have a little more room with the highlights on this one. A little bit in the whites and blacks. And the clarity, we will take this about 18 on the clarity here. And I'll probably just a, barely any texture. Uh, the detail, uh, I'll move this up to uh, 50 again. And in the optics, I'm going to move the uh, aberration and, any, uh, and do the uh, profile correction. So that is pretty much that. We'll open him up in Photoshop. So here's that file. And 
let's see where we go with, with him. So once again, this is another composite. This is a non-action. This is kind of a portrait composite. Uh, so you can see he is my background layer, but I'm gonna cover him up uh, black. Let me go up here. And this is our uh, layer with the layer mask. And then, so we'll build in the background behind him. Once again, uh, we've got, uh, you know, a stadium background. Grab the right layer. Obviously, we can move this around wherever we feel like it fits. We can enlarge it, we can shrink it, uh, you know, just really wherever we want to put it, uh, we can put it. And so I felt in this image that it worked right there. I think um, a big part of it was the light coming off the side of his face here. Seemed like it was a little brighter than this side, and we'll also accentuate that a little bit. So I've got these lights kicking kind of up in this corner, which kind of play off of what's going on the side of his face there. So added a blur there, a field blur. Let me take that one down. And then masked out the, uh, the very top and the bottom uh, of that stand area. Added a little more uh, light up here. Let's see, just with a uh, normal um, brush with some white there. Here's one more, this is soft light, kind of bringing in more detail on these lights. Let's see. And then I hit these back here behind him. So all this is going on behind him. Uh, one more. I think this is just a layer, which I actually I didn't do anything on. And then right here I added uh, some of the uh, garnet color to the stands to kind of help them match here. Uh, you'll see when I do the uh, color grading um, in a minute, that helps keep them balanced. Uh, so, and actually speaking of, here we go with the color grading. If I don't have that, you can see they go darker and they kind of eat, soak up that uh, color grade. And so I wanted to bring them a little bit back, or bring them back a little bit. Uh, and once again, I'm using color balance on this one. It's just been a kick lately. Same basic color grade. I've been keeping these consistent uh, for uh, this past shoot. Uh, the next file here, this is a uh, uh, carving, kind of a uh, dodge and burn layer. It's set to soft light. I'll go up here. You can see it there. Uh, so I've got you know, the, I'm accentuating the highlights with the lights and the shadows with the uh, the darks there. Get back to the soft light. And uh, what I did here is duplicate it, blurred it, and then brought it back in at just barely like a six at 16%. So you can see. Let me zoom in a little bit here, and you can kind of you can see the work that I've done with the uh, dodging and burning. If you're interested, I can probably do another um, video, kind of gets into this a little uh, more in depth. Added another uh, color uh, layer, well actually it's an overlay layer with this red kind of garnet uh, feel to, to bring it back into more of the school colors uh, to go a little bit away from that color grade that I did here with the color balance. Um, take the green kind of out. Um, here I've added some light to kind of bring him into the picture a little bit more. I've come over his shoulder pads and his hair right here. And that's one more, just this was kind of a tight stroke here. And then this is a little more broad. Um, here's uh, sharpening, high pass sharpening. Another high pass here, a um, little more going on. I've masked out everything um, except where I wanted that high pass. And that's probably around 50 or so. Uh, to sharpen, so I wanted to keep the background uh, inside in that kind of soft, um, out of focus feel in the background. So I didn't want to fool with that. So that's where that mask is, is there. Uh, another kick to the exposure right there. Pull that so you can see that. So just a little pull on the uh, middle of the curve. Group these up so you can kind of see. That's where we started. And that's where we ended there. And then, as you can see, I, I did not bring it out to here because I knew I was going to be cropping in kind of at a vertical based off of his body position. And so with, without, being, without going too crazy in Photoshop, we, we've actually, you know, we, we've taken this image uh, from here 
and really raise the level of this image to where it is right here and how I posted it on my Instagram. All right, well, I think this video went a little, a little bit longer than I was expecting it to. You hear my computer's fans going nuts over here. I don't think it likes uh, when I record and uh, flow through Photoshop uh, showing off the, the retouch. But uh, if you've got any questions, comments, feel free to drop those down below. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you would like to uh, see more of this type of content, uh, feel free to subscribe down there and hit that little uh, bell so YouTube lets you know that I've posted a new video. Something I'm, I may be toying around with, if some of y'all would like me to go more in depth uh, with the retouching this aspect, maybe even more in depth with lighting, um, I might be able to set up some kind of, who knows, maybe like a Patreon or something where it's a couple bucks a month and I can post videos like these um, where I'm not breaking down maybe three images, but I really kind of go through and, and maybe do the whole retouch on an image. Um, but I just thought I would throw that out there, see if there was any interest in that type of thing. Um, so maybe I will you know, look at you know, seeing if that might be viable because these do take a lot more time than you would think to put together. Uh, and if I'm gonna do a full retouch one, just to work all that out would probably be at least half a day or so. So if that's, if that's an option, uh, you know, if there's something that some of y'all might be uh, interested in, you know, just let me know in the comments below and, and I'll kind of look into it. Uh, otherwise, uh, find me on social media. I mean, you might've seen these images already uh, on my Instagram at Quants Photo and Twitter at Quants Photo. Um, stay safe and healthy out there. And I will hopefully be here again, kind of using the same angle as I did the last video, but I will be here for the next one. There it is, there's the camera. So you might've heard this uh, going on underneath my feet during that first uh, image that I was breaking down. And uh, I think he was doing his best to distract me. And uh, so I hope when I was, I haven't gone back and looked at the tape yet, I hope it made sense. All right, Fritzy, everybody goodbye.